Perfect. Welcome back. Um, now I'll invite Dr. Chamitha from University of Edinburgh for his talk on 5G and 6G. Could you please share your slides? Okay, uh, can you see my screen? <clears throat> yes, we can. Great. Um, I don't think the remote viewers can see it, right? Uh, uh, I think so. We have viewers can see everything. Okay, we, okay. that's fine. Yeah. I just projected the whole team. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, shall I shall I start? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, that's great. So hi, uh, I'm Chamita. Uh, I'm a lecturer at uh, the School of Computer Science and Technology in University of Bedfordshire. So Nitesh uh, started uh, giving you a nice overview about five G. So uh, what I am going to give you is some sort of uh, a flavor of what will happen beyond 5G uh, towards 6G and like uh, and what will be the security landscape. So that's that's the idea that I'm going to give you. So why why talk about 6G? So what, what cannot be done with 5G? So uh, there are several things that are happening in the world that uh, uh, makes us believe or uh, expect to have a newer generation of network by around 2030. So one such driving trend is the expansion of IoT. So it's expected uh, or it's estimated that only about 0.6% of the devices are connected to the internet at the moment. So that means there are more and more devices that need to be connected. There'll be more and more new device categories and these will generate massive amounts of small data. So that's unlike big data, these are small sets of data with limited uh, time validity. So uh, they'll be used for operation and maintenance of machines in industry 5.0 and uh, maybe a smart grid 2.0 and all those kind of things. And they will demand self-sustaining networks. So the devices uh, will uh, sort of uh, have to use the zero touch ma network maintenance and all those kind of things. And the convergence of communication, computing, control, localization, and sensing, uh, along with that uh, zero energy IoT with energy harvesting and energy sharing. So present 5G networks do not support these kind of things. Advancement of communication technologies with VLC, terahertz, tiny cells. So uh, the present network uh, does not support these kind of things. And uh, we expect to see uh, what we at the moment see in movies like gadget-free communication through holographic teleportation. So they will need massive amounts of data in the range of terabits. And also interestingly, the interesting elderly population which will need more and more advanced and intelligent healthcare services, hospital to home services and ambient assistant living and also emerging technologies and applications such as the ones that we mentioned, connected autonomous vehicles, uh, smart grid 2.0 and all those kind of things. So this is why we will need a newer generation of networks. So Nitish covered uh, from uh, the beginning of uh, mobile uh, communication up to 5G. And beyond 5G, we see that we uh, expect to see in uh, data rates in the range of terabits per second, end to end delays in the range of uh, less than 1.1 millisecond, uh, very less uh, processing delays, very high reliabilities uh, up to five nines, uh, and then uh, availability, uh, very high connection density, and, uh, and extreme mobile broadband will sort of extend towards a further ex ex enhanced mobile broadband, and ultra massive machine type communication, extremely reliable low latency communication. So these will be achieved through many new technologies such as terahertz, AI federated learning, compressive sensing, blockchains, form networking, and so on and so forth. So, uh, where we are at the moment, so at the moment we are in 2023, where we are talking about 5G evolution, more 5G related research, 5G commercialization. And in the meantime, um, we are also working in the research community. We are also working on developing the 6G vision uh, and uh, developing 6G requirements, studying about 6G, standardizing and uh, structuring about 6G, 
uh, doing some research projects about 6G. So uh, that's where we are at the moment. And um, if you look at the 6G applications, so these are some of the interesting ones like the Internet of Everything, where they'll have a lot of data, uh, agile data analytics. And uh, as I mentioned, only 0.6% of the devices are yet connected. So more devices will be connected with more cyber physical interfaces. And Industry 5.0, where we will have uh, more uh, cobots uh, who will uh, work along with the humans uh, to make them do better. So if you look at uh, Iron Man, you can see that these devices in the movies uh, will make them superhumans, you know. So likewise, uh, they will work with humans to achieve better tasks and more and more UAVs, uh, more and more energy harvesting and uh, many uh, multi-sensory functions uh, and a hospital to home and real-time uh, systems uh, collaborating with robots uh, in intelligent healthcare. And also Smart Grid 2.0, which will uh, sort of, which is uh, envisaged to solve the energy crisis with uh, more and more prosumers instead of consumers. So people will not only be consuming energy, but uh, they will be harnessing renewable energy to generate new and new uh, uh, energy uh, uh, to also be uh, uh, generating energy. So this energy will be shared among uh, different households, uh, and uh, there are uh, people are working um, on uh, blockchain-based systems uh, to. Uh, facilitate this and um, uh, the future communication networks will need to uh, provide the foundation for this and also many things like pa personalized body area networks where different uh, health sensors will be communicating with each other uh, and um, it is envisaged to see uh, visible light communication for these kind of things because that has uh, virtually no harm uh, for in-body communication so many 6G applications uh, uh, are in the horizon and towards this there are so, so in this picture you can see how these kind of different uh, technologies uh, different applications uh, and different devices uh, sort of uh, are laid uh, in uh, uh, five layers like the device layer the wireless access layer edge layer intelligent control layer and the smart application layer so how they sort of uh, work with each other uh, to uh, sort of achieve this uh, 6G and uh, there are several critical technologies that are sort of uh, uh, important towards uh, moving uh, towards 6G. So uh, intent based networking and also terahertz communication. So that's one of the key technologies that we see and also on top of that uh, artificial intelligence. So AI is sort of like the backbones of uh, 6G. So it's like uh, people say that it's 5G plus uh, AI on steroids. Uh, so it will be useful for all the applications. So I cannot go into details due to the time. But uh, <clears throat> uh, when, you when I share the sites, you can see all this information. And also you can refer to our papers. And there's blockchain and DLT, which will sort of facilitate the decentralized operation of uh, all these kind of infrastructure and resources, smart devices and gadgets. And uh, especially quantum communication is on the rise. So um, there will be a lot of quantum related uh, computing stuff and then uh, there'll be a lot of quantum related security issues which we'll look at in a moment so when we look at all these kind of things we can see that okay so we are opening up uh, a new area so there'll be a new uh, uh, technologies there'll be new devices new gadgets and all these things will also open up new threat vectors so uh, uh, if you look at this figure you can see that uh, the security concerns uh, gradually increased and now we are in 6G and it will have new threat actors, new threat vectors. So there will be AI ML basis attacks, quantum attacks, physical layer attacks for VLC terahertz. So let's sort of uh, dive in a bit and see what kind of uh, things are there. So if we look at the security threat landscape of 6G, we can see there are, well, obviously the pre-6G security issues will continue, right? So man in the middle attack, DDoS attacks. Uh, Sibyl attacks, so those kind of things, uh, sensing attacks and uh, sniffing attacks. And on top of that, there'll be new attacks based on the 6G ar ar architecture. So there'll be tiny cells, there'll be mesh networks, uh, there'll be sub networks, uh, there'll be zero touch networks, and all these things will collect a lot of data uh, for uh, to train their learning models. And uh, this will have some privacy issues. And also, if we look at some 6G technologies such as AI, ML, blockchain, quantum computing, VLC. So they will also open up some new set of uh, security issues. Say for instance, uh, if you look at AI, uh, it can have some poisonous attacks, data poisoning, and also evasion attacks, and also some of the APIs that are being used 
for uh, AI and ML can be attacked. And also, so there'll be new infrastructure that will, uh, that will be used for AI so they can be attacked. And also these uh, AI frameworks, so they can be attacked. So there are many new threat vectors that uh, we will see in the new uh, 6G era threat landscape. And also when it comes to DLT, we can see that uh, DLT uh, is, uh, can be used to have a trust, uh, trustworthy and more transparent and more secure platform. But on the other hand, with the introduction of DLT, some of the vulnerabilities of DLT will also be incorporated into these networks such as Eclipse attacks or 51% attack where uh, the attackers uh, can sort of gain control of at least 55% uh, of the mining uh, nodes and end user vulnerabilities, software vulnerabilities and also with the advent of quantum communication, it will have more new kind of uh, threat vectors, uh, quantum cloning, quantum collision and with terahertz communication, eavesdropping, access control, and uh, with visible live communication, eavesdropping, because it's it's just live, right? And uh, jamming uh, or data uh, modification attacks will be very easy even uh, from a simple uh, light source, uh, anybody can do this. So it's very difficult to detect these kind of things also. So that will be new, those are new areas that people are working on to see how uh, the to, to, to resolve these kind of things. And if you look at the 6G applications also, we can see that there are new security requirements. So if we consider UAV or smart grid or industry 5.0, so the new uh, security requirements uh, demand uh, this, uh, them to be ultra lightweight and also extremely low latency uh, and also extremely scalable, zero touch security, high privacy, and also uh, proactive security, security via edge because they'll be uh, as uh, Neetish men mentioned, uh, the multi-access edge computing is uh, expected to move towards edge, edge AI, uh, where, where there will be a lot of edge computing. And also, uh, <clears throat> so likewise, there are many kind of things and uh, there will be a lot of challenges for researchers to resolve because the limited uh, resources, resources are always limited, we need to optimize. Uh, there will be a lot of devices, uh, a lot of sensors, new, uh, new devices, new ranges and also high mobility uh, with maybe space communication or deep sea communication and also because of the diversity of devices and uh, the diversity of uh, their uh, their placement so there will be a lot of uh, possibility of physical tampering terrorist attacks uh, and also like intermittent connectivity and they'll operate in localized environments so the standards and uh, the ways of orchestrating these kind of things are still being developed and uh, they need to be done in an energy efficient fashion so with all these things, <clears throat> there are some uh, research work at the moment uh, working towards solving these kind of issues. So one is uh, distributed and scalable AI ML security. So the AI and ML uh, can be done in a distributed and scalable fashion. And also explainable AI where AI is not only treated, uh, treated as a black box, but uh, they sort of uh, try to give a meaningful way. So this is really important for lawmakers uh, and for security audits and also for security analysts uh, to see the operation of AI and uh, maybe uh, sort of uh, streamline the process or see what's missing and uh, maybe sort of uh, comply what's happening with AI based on their standards and also uh, DLTs. So DLTs will also uh, add some of their vulnerabilities, but on the other hand, it will provide more trustworthy and more sort of a secure way. And quantum security, so with quantum computing, quantum security is another area that's being developed on how to provide security in the quantum era. And many physical layer security, so terahertz technology with a low range and also visible light communication. So you can sort of block the light and that means the transmission won't happen. Unlike uh, microwave where people can sort of eavesdrop and molecular communication and uh, reconfigurable uh, intelligence surfaces where we'll see like large buildings or even roads becoming uh, a large antenna. So it's like MIMO uh, expanded in a very large scale. And um, so these technologies should be developed in a very uh, careful way. And uh, presently we have identified that uh, the KPIs of uh, these kind of technologies when we develop for 6G technologies. So the protection level should be very stringent. And also the time to respond should be very, very low. The convergence, uh, because there'll be a lot of uh, 6G technologies, 6G uh, diverse uh, 6G technologies. So the convergence also should be very challenging and very high. So the autonomous level should be very high 
because they'll be they are expected to use ai and uh, many such technologies and ai robustness is another important thing because many critical infrastructure including uh, future telecommunication networks and uh, maybe like if you consider intelligent healthcare so they will all rely on these kind of uh, solutions that we provide and the model convergence time because there will be a lot of uh, training and uh, a lot of steps and advanced uh, and uh, sort of uh, complex ai and ml technologies however like we really want to have sort of uh, a secure and uh, low ai uh, model convergence time and security function change because uh, we can see that these security functions are not individual so there are same there are this a chain right so how can we sort of optimize this in order to minimize the round trip time and uh, all these things uh, because finally they will operate as a business right so the cost to deploy these kind of security functions is another kpi so these are some of the areas that uh, these researchers are sort of heavily working on and uh, trying to optimize and finally uh, with all these things uh, so these researchers envisage to develop a secure 6g era where uh, the mankind will be gifted with more secure more capable networks that will uh, help them to work better that will help them to have achieve a better lifestyle so i think i uh, did my presentation within my time a uh, 15 minutes so uh, if you have any questions you can ask now or you have my email address and you can drop me an email so that's up to you Nitish thank you thanks for your <laughs> nice talk and i guess it was really worth uh, understanding the comprehensive 6g uh, opportunities and issues particularly related to cyber security are there any questions from the audience not very so i would just have one question yes nitish how do we specifically see 6g different from 5g in terms of capabilities and and vision yeah so if i move towards uh, this slide so uh, we can see that uh, <clears throat> so uh, in 5g we are sort of uh, talking about uh, uh, extreme mobile broadband ultra reliable low, uh, low latency communication and massive machine type communication so uh, here we are sort of uh, talking about uh, uh, gigabits per second data range and 1 millisecond uh, end to end delays uh, so but with 6g what we uh, when we are uh, moving towards that era especially uh, to realize applications such as uh, holographic teleportation we need data in the terabits range so uh, and also if we look at uh, connected autonomous vehicles especially uh, if we move from uh, the vehicles that we see in the road road towards the uh, uavs uh, which are sort of very fast uh, so we'll need end to end delays to be very low even less than uh, 0.1 milliseconds and also as we discussed uh, now this uh, multi access edge computing is moving towards uh, uh, edge ai because uh, almost all the processors are now incorporated with ai right so a new uh, set of uh, parameters uh, starting such as processing delays so the processing delays which is uh, not talk much as uh, kpi in uh, 5, 5g so they should also be le less than maybe like 10 nanoseconds because uh, most of the decisions will depend on this processing delays so uh, and the reliability availability and connection density will expand more because uh, rather than uh, devices operating on their own they'll probably operating with humans so uh, even a tiny delay will uh, be very critical so similarly the other things like uh, energy efficiency spectrum efficiency and the mobility because uh, now we see in news that uh, people are talking about space communication so with space communication they will want uh, to have communication to extend beyond earth so then uh, 6g is also looking at this uh, uh, deep sea communication and also space communication and to cater to a sort of very high mobility even beyond 1000 kilo uh, meters per second so here you can see the 6g vision like what we envisage so all these things are in uh, included in our paper which you can um, find which is available online and uh, how these enabling technologies work together towards realizing these 6g applications thank yeah. you thanks right yeah um thanks for your talk um